I'd like to introduce my dear friend Manish Jain. Manish, like many of us, has stepped out of the mainstream worldview and way of doing things, and his case is particularly interesting because he went to Harvard and then he worked at Morgan Stanley, he was with the UN and World Bank, and as he saw what this dominant globalizing system was about, he realized he needed to go back to India and learn from his illiterate grandmother. From that, he became a very wise man, and that included questioning the dominant schooling system, and he's now more recently helped to set up a whole series of ecoversities around the world, and we're very thrilled that you could join us, uh, even though it was squeezed between all kinds of very important commitments. Thank you, Manish. Right. Um, so I'm not supposed to hop around or do any bhangra. Everyone knows bhangra here? Yeah. You can do a little with me. Loosen up. Byron crowd is stiff, huh? <laughs> All right. So anyways, I think um, what I would just say that my uh, work in the world I see today is to kind of reclaim our cultural imaginations. And over the years of my journey, the last 25 years, um, I came to see that schooling, which has been propped up by the development uh, establishment all over the world by all kinds of great people to be a great panacea for the world, I started to believe and feel that uh, this might be one of the greatest crimes against humanity. When we look today, the way we look at slavery with the horror and disgust and disbelief, 20 years from now, we'll be looking at this factory schooling system and saying, how could we have done this to innocent children? There's a... <laughs> There's a very uh, famous saying, I don't know if you've heard it, the white man who brought the pencil also brought the eraser. <laughs> so in the name of literacy, we have erased the literacy of the land. In the name of literacy, we have erased the literacy of community. In the name of literacy, we've ex erased the literacy of the spirit world. Uh, in the name of literacy, we've erased the literacy of our local languages. So uh, can anyone guess? I'm going to ask you a little quiz. Uh, I know we all, this is not a school. I'm anti-schooling, so it's <laughs> ironic that I'm asking you. In India, I was talking to somebody who at, uh, I was last year at the International Permaculture Convergence, and I uh, met somebody, a brilliant guy who has growing about uh, 900 varieties of rice on his land. He's trying to keep that local seeds alive. Uh, how many varieties of rice do you think there were at, in, in India at its peak? Any guesses? Huh? 800? Any other guesses? 16,000? Any others? Huh? 6,000. 6, so what if I told you that pre-schooling, pre-modern schooling, there were 114,000 documented varieties of rice. So this gives you a sense of what the monoculture of the mind does to us. So, I mean, I think most young people can't, uh, can't uh, name more than one or two varieties of that, you know? So... Um, Many of you are into social justice, so I would ask that we look at schooling as a, uh, from a social justice lens and think that how many children are branded as failures? How many millions and millions? In India, it's like crazy. Kids come to me and introduce themselves. I'm a 10th class failure. I'm an 8th class failure. This is the first line of their introduction. Um, and You've heard of the farmer suicides in India, I think, everyone? So I would say that there's something that nobody talks about. It's the farmer's murders. That you ask any child in any school across the country, government or private, do you want to become a farmer? No child will raise their hands. Those who even have a sight inkling are afraid of public ridicule for becoming a farmer. If you ask the schools, some of the schools where I live in Udaipur, 
Children are punished by the school for speaking their local languages. This is continuing. So when I say it's a crime, right, a crime against humanity, it's not a light thing. There's a place in India uh, called Kota. It's in the state I live in. It's, it was first started as the coaching capital. So there's a whole business of coaching and preparing for uh, entrance examinations. So roughly uh, one million um, kids a year pay lots of money to prepare for entrance exams for 11,000 seats, one million people. And you can imagine the kind of depression, anxiety. So Kota was recently named, changed, the name was changed from the coaching uh, city to the suicide city. There's been more than 80 suicides in the last four years by kids because of the tre tremendous amount of pressure. I met one boy uh, recently, his name was Arjun. Uh, we, I was walking on, our, uh, on the bank of our lake and I, uh, he came up and he, he said he, he had heard of me and I was talking to him and he said he, didn't, he has not gone home for the last three years because he was in Kota and he failed the medical school exam and he said, I cannot show my face to my family. My entire village, my parents sold their land for me to go to this, this uh, place. And he said, how? I'm a failure. I'm a total. I mean, so it was heartbreaking, heartbreaking to see. Um, so what I would like to say is that uh, the kind of, I'm just going to, I'm unschooled. I can't read that note. <laughs> <laughs> So what I would like to say is that as a localization movement, um, we need to reimagine education. There's beautiful things I'm seeing, people creating school gardens, mindfulness in schools, but I would like to argue that that's not enough. The operating system of the school, the design, is d designed to destroy the human spirit and human creativity. Um, so um, so add-ons, no more add-ons, this is my appeal. We need to do some fundamental design. So 10 years ago, um, my daughter has been unschooled. She's, never, she's 16 now. Uh, my mother is a doctor. She was asking me to, put, pressurizing me to start putting her through all these exams and everything. How is she going to go to university? So I decided not to send her to school, to create, but to create my own university, which we created 10 years ago with friends uh, called Swaraj University. And, um, very strong focus of that is unlearning, uh, unlearning much of the damage that school has done to us. Uh, second focus of that is on community living. Uh, how do we live together? And the third is a focus on what I call our grandmother's university, the grandmother's wisdom and knowledge. How do we reconnect to that? Um, and recently, three years ago, we, create, we started to create uh, a global alliance uh, called the Ecoversities Alliance. It's right now 100 alternative universities all over the world. We, one thing we talk about, uh, it's in 40 countries, uh, and these are all kinds of ecoversities. There's, there's forest ecoversities, there's eco-village ecoversities, there's transition town ecoversities, there's um, uh, real village ecoversities, there's favela ecoversities, there's um, uh, cafe ecoversities. So we're starting to redefine what it is, and we would like to challenge what is the university, who decides the knowledge that is to be learned for the well-being of human life, of life on the planet. And um, we also, um, uh, uh, we have been working on one campaign. Uh, so we say that universities teach us deadlyhoods. Basically, every single profession of the university is to destroy the planet. And what we are concerned with is a livelihoods. So we've made a, a list of 52 uh, a livelihoods. I, I can't read that. What is that? I to say Hindi bolta. So 52 a livelihoods. What makes our spirit come alive? What makes our communities come alive? And what makes our ecosystems come alive again? So what I, last thing I would just like to say is that um, the way that we think is part of the crisis. So we cannot continue with this linear, fragmented, separated, disconnected, short-term, monoculture thinking. This will make us take us deeper and deeper into the crisis, is what 
what my previous friends have been talking about. And so we need to open up new ways of knowing that come from the wisdom of the land, the wisdom of place, the wisdom of the body, the wisdom of our relationships, the, wis the, the intelligence of love, um, and the wisdom of our ancestors and future, future generations. So I invite you, there's an exciting movement to reimagine education, higher education. We are also doing a lot of work to reimagine education for young, for kids, and also for grandparents and all different kinds of ages. Last thing I want to do a plug before I go. A recent project that we've started is called the Jail University. So it's to bring a radical learning, free learning model into the jail and help to help inmates see that they're they've committed a crime, but they can still do amazing, beautiful things in their life. So thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>